Okay, a uh, quick video note to let you guys know that I have apple pollen, apple seeds, and apple scions and a couple of different pairs too available for sale in my web store. And it took me a while to get everything inventoried and listed and all that stuff. The store is password protected until the 7th at midnight. So that's Wednesday night, Thursday morning at midnight. And uh, for patrons to shop early, I always do that. Give those guys a chance to shop early and get whatever they want first because there's a very limited quantity of a lot of this stuff. So I have, let's talk about what I got. I got pollen. So this is a chance for people to work with the varieties that I'm talking about all the time, like Wixen, here's some Kerry Pippin, here's Gold Rush, Ashmead's Kernel, Maypole, King David was in here. I think that's already sold. Yeah, pretty cool because think about it. Otherwise you have to, like say you become interested in a variety or you've tasted it before, but you don't have it and no one else near you has it, then you have to find someone to send you pollen or you've got to find a scion, graft the scion, grow it for two or three years until it fruits or, you know, flowers. And then you have to take off the first flowers, which you probably would rather let go to fruit. You can make the cross pollination. Then you wait the rest of the season. The next year you plant the seed, then it grows out for a year. And then you have something you can graft out and grow. So that could be, you know, three, four, five year project. This kind of will help circumvent that if someone wants to work with uh, these pollens. Now, my plan for the future is that these are gathered last spring and stored in the freezer. That has some advantages and I may start doing that on purpose. So the problem is that if I try to get the earliest varieties and the latest varieties harvested, dried, listed, let people know they're there, then get them shipped to everybody on time, it just doesn't really work out basically. So, and that's probably why pollen sales haven't been that good. Like all of this is left over from last year trying to sell it in the spring. And I think already I've sold more now than I did last spring. So I haven't tested this though. I've kept pollen over for a whole year at room temperature and had it work. Other times I wasn't quite sure it worked so good, uh, but sometimes it definitely worked. I think that it should keep better in the freezer. That's a really common way to store pollen. As long as it's really dry, it should be okay. So I think it'll work. I'm gonna test it. You know, I'm selling it this year with that caveat that I'm, you know, I can't really guarantee potency or anything. Uh, and I'll be testing the same batches of pollen this year. I have a stash set aside. And if it works out well in the future, I'm going to change to putting them in these. I bought some uh, black paper here. So I fold these little origami packets that I came with, came up with. And this is gonna allow us to see the light colored yellow pollen against the black paper. So you can get every last bit of it out. And this is also easier for me to dry because in the plastic bags, it's hard to prop those open and get the pollen dried. But in this, it's like porous and absorb absorbing moisture. So when you're looking in here and getting the pollen out with your Q-tip or whatever, you'll be able to actually see it. And then when you get to the bottom of the barrel, it'll be easy to open this up and get the last little bit. So I think it'll make more efficient use of the pollen. So that's the plan next year. As long as this pollen performs good, uh, this spring, then, and it sells well too, because it's a, it's a pretty big pain in the butt to gather this stuff. It's not like I just go out one day and get them all. It's a long season and I have to go visit the plant repeatedly. If it's not flowering very much, then I have to say, okay, well, I'm not going to harvest any fruit from that this year, because obviously the flowers are what make the fruit once they're pollinated. You have to visit the same tree multiple times. It's just all a lot of, you know, screwing around and so if this stuff sells well, the plan is to gather it this spring and then sell it next winter. But the cool thing is that I can get stuff from the entire season and have a pretty good array of stuff available. And it'll give people enough time to pre-plan a little bit. Seeds. This is the first year I'm offering uh, intentional crosses. For instance, this is Rubiot and Williams Pride. So I was able to pick both parents, you know, get some William Pride pollen, Williams Pride pollen, put it on the Rubiot, and here we go. Seeds. So I have quite a few of those too. Um, pretty neat. There's a chestnut crab with St. Edmund's Pippin, a really nice russet. King David with grenadine, um, chestnut and maple. So this is a high quality dessert crab apple with a red flesh, deeply red flesh crab apple. That isn't very sweet, so it could use some more sugar. Here's Sweet 16 with Rubiot. Now that's a pretty exciting uh, possibility right there. Tons and tons of flavor in both of these and just intense red flesh and Rubiot. So I also have open pollinated seeds. So this is open pollinated Rubiot. This is over a thousand open pollinated uh, Wixen seeds I have this year and I made those really cheap. I 
I just want to get as many of them out as possible. So here's pink parfait open pollinated. So the open pollinated seed could be, it could be pollinated by anything. It's just pollinated by a bee that could have visited, you know, 50 different varieties of apples and you just don't know what's going to be on there. And each seed from, you know, the same apple could have a different parent. So, you know, when you're planting these, keep your expectations low about what you're going to get out of it, you know, because you plant a red fleshed apple seed doesn't mean you're going to get a red fleshed apple. Um, I'm turning out to get a pretty small proportion of significantly red fleshed apples. In fact, I've only gotten one that's really, really red fleshed, uh, very much like its parent. But in the future, I think if we can start crossing red fleshed apples with red fleshed apples, or at least ones that carry the gene. For instance, I use pink parfait a lot now in crossing because it's already a refined apple and really great in every way except that it gets scab and so i'm crossing i already have like a good good material to work with here and if i can start crossing something like this or one of my crosses with my other crosses for instance i have one here that's um wixen with one of my seedling apples so this seedling apple is a cross between lady williams and grenadine and so now I can start taking things like this and crossing it with things like this and hopefully start producing more deeper red fleshed apples, higher percentage and higher quality. The, the common myth is that if you plant an apple seed, you're going to get a bunch of inedible apples and every once in a while one will magically be good to eat like one in a thousand or some people have these stupid numbers they throw out, but that's just not true. But there's a big difference between having an edible apple and an apple that's like maybe worth eating or worth finishing and an apple that's it's worthy of propagation, you know, actually sending to other people and making more trees of it. So that's going to be definitely the, the great minority of apples are, are going to be the ones that you actually want to keep and reproduce. Not that they won't be useful in some way. You could use them in cider, you can use them in cooking, you might be even want to eat them and that's fine. But you know, the, you have to ask yourself, like, how much better is this than what's available? And if it's not really better or it's worse, then you're not going to want to propagate it. Pretty exciting though. It's cool for me because I get to keep doing these crosses and I've done all this research on these varieties and grown them out and figured out what's worth uh, working with. And I'm just out of room and energy to expand anymore. I did keep a few crosses of uh, Pink Parfait with Williams Pride to see if I can uh, get something good out of those. And I'm, I'm real excited about that cross. And there's a few of those in here. Scions. So uh, my scions aren't the greatest scions ever. Uh, I don't really take that good of care of my trees. They don't tend to grow really robust, large cyan wood. I mean, they're not bad, but you may end up with uh, skinnier scions than you might get from other places. I do take out a lot of the skinny stuff. In fact, uh, I usually keep the skinniest stuff for myself because I don't mind grafting it. Uh, this isn't, that, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, if people are expecting to get big fat scions, like, you know, more like this, that's going to be the great minority. This looks like a lot, but I have a fairly limited number of a lot of stuff. Uh, some of it's already sold out. And I do have a lot of uh, Bite Me, my seedling, which turned out to be the best eating apple of the season for about three weeks this year, which is saying a lot with all the stuff I've got here. And that was over two tastings. I, I tasted it and decided that, and then I did a quick tasting with uh, my mother was here and my friend Chuck, and we went through a whole bunch of apples, and, and then I cut that one and just handed it to him and didn't tell him what it was, and we were all getting kind of like, oh uh, yeah, it's kind of boring. Maybe our taste buds were getting worn out and both of them perked up and were like, whoa, what's this one? I'm like, bite me, suckas. So that's pretty exciting. It's really been performing well. It's uh, downfall is scab. We'll see over a couple more seasons how that plays out, but I think that's gonna be its like Healy's Hill, which is uh, too bad. But it was just a random open pollinated Wixen seed. And look at that. There are about a thousand, 1,500 seeds in here because someone already got 50 of them. And each one of these is genetically unique and it could be crossed with anything. And if all of these were planted, uh, man, there, there just have to be some really good apples that would come out of that. Okay, so good luck with your uh, breeding and growing projects. And if you are interested in apple breeding possibilities, then watch my video playlist of apple breeding videos it's best to just go watch the whole video playlist or get into the video playlist because everything's in there and you can pick and choose if you want if you're interested in uh, grafting I have a grafting playlist 10 I have a 10 video series on dormant grafting that pretty much goes through a whole lot of stuff about the type of grafting you do with this type of a scion and yeah good luck and 
Good night.